stupid little girl, thinking you could kill me with a gun. Yeah, bye. Perfect organism. Oh, rubber legs. Ah, rubber legs. When looking at Mesco's iteration of the original Xenomorph, there is no other way of describing it than by phrasing it as a literal piece of odd. As Mesco seems to have went all in in replicating the Xenomorph's on-screen appearance into plastic form. Such statements are supported when looking at the massive dome head that this time around is retrofitted with the smooth and translucent design that explicitly shows the innards of the xenomorph such as the intricate bone structure, the complex veins, to even the skeletal structure of the human host. But what is a xenomorph if not for its biomechanical design in which the numerous components of such design are placed throughout from the mechanical pipes to the wire-like pots? That further blinds the line on whether the xenomorph can be classified as an organic or synthetic life form. But children, beware! As when observing the dome head from a longer distance, any person who is familiar with the human anatomy can instantly recognize That's a penis! But we did not mention the mouth in which the teeth, just like any other part of the xenomorph, is beautifully depicted, especially with the chrome colored teeth that not only highlights the xenomorph's biomechanical nature, but also that a little alien that had no teeth care prior has a better line set than your average brick. Laugh it up! But if you open the mouth, there is this inner mouthpiece that is also beautifully sculpted and can be inserted, culminating in the Xenomorph's iconic inner mouth that instills fear and terror into whoopy corpses. But if you want the Xenomorph to use the full length of its literal kiss of death, there is this alternative inner mouth that this time around possesses an open jaw and retains a longer length that enables the Xenomorph to eliminate hostiles with great efficiency. But Mesco didn't end here as they also gave us this green slime covered mouth in order to recreate the last time the big chap was seen with his mouth open aboard the escape shuttle. And I gotta say that the slime is substandard regarding paint quality compared to what came before and gives off this cheap, made-for-children toy aesthetic that degrades the overall value of the figure when attached. So this is a no-go for me. Moving down, the torso also retains the biomechanical design with the intricate tube-like structures that consist of the shoulders, the exposed skeletal ribcage that are beautifully painted and highlight the xenomorph's grotesque design, and the rear tubes that are similarly applied with the high standards seen before and aid in the xenomorph being able to absorb the required nutrients in the local environment, which likely explains why the xenomorph can stay active without needing to feed. But Mesco, as wanting to be extra screen accurate, rather than replicating the xenomorph in all plastic, decided to be accurate to the actual suit in which the arms and the rest of the body are composed of rubber. I don't like rubber on my figures. Which left me in a state of confusion as this is my first rubber figure in which I had a hard time grasping on how to handle it. But with time, I found both the advantages and disadvantages of the particular substance in which, while the soft material aids in the figure's flexibility in conducting various poses, as well as adding an additional layer of the grotesque Geiger-esque horror as the owner when touching the figure feels like they're actually touching a living organism. But the drawbacks are that it collects an awful lot of dust that is hard to remove and 
and are prone to wear and tear, and will likely age like milk over time, especially in the human temperature that is the Korean summer. But with that said, the rubber composed arms, just like before, are intricately sculpted with the previously mentioned biomechanical design and a soft elbow appendage, and they all culminate in a hand that possesses sleek and long fingers that oozes a level of femininity that is hard to see even in anime waifus. Look at the abdomen, the soft rubber perfectly succeeds in replicating H.R. Giger's beautiful design with the various wires and tubes all being organically applied. Alongside the soft rubber belly that adds an extra layer of authenticity to the perfect organism. Moving down to the legs, similar to the arms, possess the identical levels of quality and the rubber helps in some extra movement. And they all culminate in a pair of feet that just like the hand, that also oozes a high level of femininity and is a far attractive footwear to 99% of anime waifus. But if you want to go all in, the feet retain the goat jawbone on the rear of the feet, with even the teeth properly rendered, adding to Mesco's insane levels of abiding to screen accuracy. And while most of the features regarding a figure would end here, the xenomorph, unlike that of your average human or elf, possesses the iconic tail that not only adds an adding extra riz with the already perfect design, as the tail rather than that of the body is more or less organic, skeletal to be exact, in design and ends in a spike, which is probably the tool that Xenomorph uses the most, especially in immobilizing mobile wounds to play the respective roles. But just like the body is composed of rubber and a metallic wire inside that aids in calibrating the Xenomorph into the dynamic instrument of death it is. When observing with Mesco a company with a perfect organism, I have to say that they came up with a hard swing. Besides the previously mentioned inner mouth, there are the accompanying hands. Besides the out of the box feminine hands, there are the open hunting hands that forsake the seductive wrist and instead go full in on carrying out their primal instincts. Then there are the Vulcan live long and prosper hands. That I don't know what they're used for, but are probably perfect when the xenomorph is about to molest the would-be prey. Then there's this alternative chest piece with a cable attached that can be placed by removing the original piece and reattaching the alternative one. The acts of replicating when the xenomorph was plucked out of the escape shuttle with a harpoon at the end. But to be honest, it's an accessory. But if you want to get a good look at the xenomorph life cycle, the queen lays the overmorph, or can be created by individual drones laying the initial foundations of the hive, in which the overmorph, or eggs, for you casuals, is beautifully replicated in front of my eyes with the rigid and skin texture surface, the egg-shaped opening that reminds me of a particular paw, and the enormous size that truly brings the shock factor to another level. But if an organic is to be in the vicinity, then the overmorph widely opens in which the interior is beautifully sculpted with it being almost identical to a particular body part. And from the overmorph arises the face hugger that resembles a crustacean with the various appendages. But looky underneath, does the parasite really resemble a certain body part alongside the sacs resembling an actual pair of testicles that tries to attach itself to a host's face? The literal definition of a teabag. <laughs> And once the teabagging is set in stone, the facehugger's tail constricts around the host's neck and the legs firmly grasp onto the head, eliminating any chances of the facehugger being forcefully removed without the risk of killing the host, in which meanwhile implants an embryo within the host. But once the facehugger has come, it latches off the host and joins the netherworld, knowing its objective is accomplished as the victim unknowingly conducts their daily routine only for them to suffer a seizure in front of their loved ones and ultimately contribute to a higher birth rate than that of Korea. Virgin birth. And here you have the chest burster, which literally, as described in the name, emerges from the chest with a bang and happens to seek shelter as it is when the xenomorph is at its most vulnerable. With that said, the chest burster, regardless of its small size, is beautifully sculpted with the likes of the dome head, 
immaculate tail and a T-Rex like arms, which is inaccurate to the one seen in the first film, so Mesco does have his faults. But still, beautifully portrayed, this is not mentioning the immaculate paint job applied as rather than trying to portray the infant in the run of the mill light green drab, due to the parasite's nature, the chestbuster is covered in the blood and gore of his forebears, resulting in an organism that while might look kawaii at first glance, is in reality a terrifying organism that only gets more dangerous as time passes. When closely observing this height in which Mesco's xenomorph stands at, the big chap is surely the representation of the perfect organism as it stands at a whopping 18 centimeters or 7.09 inches tall, making it stand over typical human or gods alike. Here's Mesco's big chap next to Gumpla, Kaijus, Anime Waifus, that's a penis! And fellow perfect organisms. When observing how flexible a big chap is, while its on-screen appearance left some room to be desired, it nonetheless was able to pull off all the feats that your average Joe could do, with future iterations portraying higher levels of flexibility. But with that said, Mesco left me surprised as rather than following his competitors and applying either ball or ratchet joints, Mesco chose a more unique path, as he instead chose to implement a metallic structure within the rubber, adding to a figure that seems to be more organic when being displayed in dynamic poses. The head, due to its peculiar shape and surrounding appendages, limits up and down movement, but side to side movement is decent. Torso movement is more or less non existent, but side to side movement is superb. Due to the metallic skeleton and rubber skin, shoulder movement is superb. Arms can move in certain dynamic poses. There is the hidden bicep movement that can move the entire arm. Elbows can bend over 90 degrees. Dynamic hand movement, leg spread is surely a frontier that no man has dared to approach before. While stiff, the leg movement is there, and just like the arms, the leg can also move side to side. Knees can bend up to 9 degrees. A flexible feet movement, and the bendy wire tail allows for dynamic movement. But I don't want to harm the rubber. What is there left to say? Mesco's iteration of the Big Chap is a fantastic release, as they have spared no expense in replicating H.R. Geiger's original design into classic form. Such highlights are portrayed through the seductive and race-filled design, the biomechanical components that are beautifully inscribed, the combination of a translucent plastic alongside the soft and organic like rubber, and the wide range of posability that the figure is able to pull off. This is not mentioning the abundance of accessories that are accompanied with the Xenomorph, which isn't just restricted by the alternative hands, but those that depict the true beauty of how life is created, rather than the typical boy meets girl romance that results in a feeble and emotional mess of an organism. Because they are a dying species grasping for resurrection. They don't deserve to start again and I'm not going to let them. The only gripe I may have is that the rubber substance used is likely to deteriorate over time, especially in the Korean summer. So would be bias, beware. With that said, why not let a true man of expertise sum up my thoughts? Perfect. Well done. It's structural. Perfection is matched only by its aesthetic. A survival. And then cloud it. Like conscience, remorse, or delusions of morality. <laughs>